And today, what we're going to talk about is why you need to be in control of your tools. Even if your host agency has seduced you with all of these available tools that are at your disposal, we're going to talk about some key tools that you need to own inside of your travel business. You need to be the controller of it and why it's important for you to do that. Before I continue, for those who don't know me, my name is Sunday Gardner. I come to you every week talking all things launching and operating a successful and profitable travel business. And so before I go, just from from those that are watching, let me know how many of you guys have your own website. Type a one if you have your own website. Type a zero if you don't have your own website. Um, the other thing is type a one if you have your own CRM tool, type a zero if you don't have your own CRM tool, because these are some of the things that host agencies seduce new um, agents with is I'll give you a website, I'll give you access to a CRM system, I'll give you all of these sort of infrastructure op- you know, operational things so you don't have to worry about it. And Although it seems attractive to want to do that because you're like, oh my gosh, that's one less thing I have to worry about. And oh, the fees, they're giving it to me for free. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing in the world for free. There is a cost to every decision that you make in your travel business. And if tools are something that you have decided to outsource to your host agency, let me tell you why that's a bad idea. And so... Um, let me give you the scenario. Like, so when I started in the travel industry, uh, the host agency that I had didn't have a CRM tool. Um, they actually recommended that you (laughs) do things on paper. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like they had some forms. I think they had a credit card authorization form that they wanted you to send to your clients. So they had a, a standard host agency provided, um, uh, credit card authorization form, but I think that was it. And that was back, you know, almost 10 years ago when I started. Now, fast forward, um, I know that Outside Agents uses uh, tests. I know KHM has their own proprietary system. And a variety of different host agencies offer uh, CRM tools. So because it's it's that important that you, if you're not using a CRM tool, I already know that you potentially are not really taking your business serious because the amount of data that we have to manage just warrants some sort of system to do it in. Um, So, you know, CRM tool, a lot of host agencies offer CRM tools. A lot of host agencies offer websites. A lot of them offer uh, a link, a URL with their website so that you can get drive traffic to that website. Um, Some of them offer stationery. Some of them offer, you know, just a collection of different tools that you have. But the biggest tool that host agencies now, it seems to be offering is your own CRM tool and a website. And the reason why that may be attractive for you is because you're like, I'm not tech savvy. Like, I don't want to have to set up a website. I don't want to have to go get a domain. That's really scary to me. So What you do is you outsource that control to your host agency and you outsource that technology decision to a host agency. I get it. You know, I, I'm very, you know, tech savvy. I love technology. I love software, but that's my thing. And I can understand that that may not be your thing. So I understand why the attraction to the dark side (laughs) is there. So I get it. Like you also may be thinking, oh, I don't know what it costs to get a website. That sounds expensive. You know, having my own CRM system sounds expensive, right? Um, And so I don't want to mess with that. I'll just take whatever the host agency gives me. And here's a problem with that. So let's talk about number one um, in terms of uh, if you want to have your own brand, What a brand really is, it's your identity. It's your business identity. It literally is your, your, you think about your driver's license, right? Your passport. That is your identity of who you are. 
your brand is that same thing. It is the thing that that defines who you are. There's there's a whole level of psychology around branding, right? The emotion, so the colors, the imagery that you use, what kind of emotion does it evoke when somebody sees it? It's very important. Certainly not the very first thing that you need to worry about when you start your travel business, but certainly if that's something that you want to aspire to, you want to be in control of that from day one. And so what I mean by that is when you take on your your host agency's website, for example, you've relinquished all control of look and feel. Now, some of the host agencies, they will allow you to change the colors But the layout, the user experience that your clients go through when they interact with your website is all defined by the host agency. You don't get to control the narrative at all. You don't get to control how, um, when somebody lands on the page, right? What's the first interaction that they have? The host agency defines that. The reason why that's important is particularly when it comes to a website, Websites are really not valuable unless you're driving traffic to it. Unless you've invested a significant amount of money, time and effort, either somebody's time who, who this is their, their jam and they know all about, you know, optimizing a website. It's not likely that your website is going to even be discovered. And, and, and that's the reality. So. I know that I, I did a poll last year inside of the group and I asked what's what is the number like what are the first things that you do or you did when you started a business and many people told me they got business cards they got a website and um, business cards and a website were like the, the top two I don't remember what the number three one was but a website and a, a URL. And the reason why people get websites is because it feels good and so you get your host agency website And then you've got, you know, usually what happens is, and I can always tell this, is you get a host agency's website and you get, you know, host agency name or your name dot host agency dot com. So when you're handing it out to people, you slap that URL on your business card. You now are yet again ingrained in, um, you know, aligned forever and ever without having to do some massive change to the host agency. Your host agency is a partner and they really should be a silent partner um, in your business in so much that, you know, if you decide to sever the relationship, not on bad terms, but you do decide to sever the relationship, if you have, you know, your name, let's say sundaygardener.hostagency.com, that means now your business cards need to be changed out, your website, all of your collateral that you have has to be changed out because you decided to change partners, right? So that's actually my number three is, is that your business continuity is disrupted when you use their tools and you, you don't have your own tools. I'm going to go to business continuity in a a minute, but the first thing is control. You want to be able to control the experience. You want to be able to control what people see, how they interact with your business when you have a website. And so I told you the story about the website because the, the, the reality with the website is the only really objective that a website should do is to get contact information because 90%, I don't remember like the industry statistic, but it's, it's a pretty high statistic that the people that visit your website are not prepared to buy at that moment, particularly websites. Now, if you're on platforms like Pinterest, the, the, the readiness to buy is a lot greater on platforms like Pinterest, Instagram, but your website proper, usually people are driven there by something that you've even led them there or they found it and they're perusing, but they may not be ready to buy. So your goal in your website is to get that contact information. Does that make sense? Like, so you want a pop-up, although it may be annoying, right? Marketing is annoying, but it has an objective. Like a pop-up needs to happen. Most of these out-of-the-box websites that people get from their host agency doesn't have that. It doesn't allow them to... 
um, provide a gift, so to speak, a stranger offer so that you can collect and make that exchange and start that conversation with your client, right? That may be all advanced knowledge for you if you're new to the business. But what the reason why I tell you that is, yeah, it's great to have a website, but really the downside of the, of having your agency website, having their URL, unless of course you can add your own URL and you don't see, you're not putting, you know, your name dot host agency on your business cards and all of your collateral, that's okay. But if you don't have that, I would venture to say I would not use that website to put on any of my marketing material because I don't want to have to change it out. Once I build particularly standard marketing material, I don't have to rebuild it if I ever change anything. I want it to live. Sunday Gardener, I, I literally have created multiple named products, right? You know, we've got Travel Passions to Profit. We've got Business Foundation. Now we've got the Travel Joy Accelerator. We've got, you know, I brand all of our products that we, all of my programs and signature programs, but SundayGardener.com, that's where, that, that's everywhere. Like that's everything. So every time I change and come up with a new product and I, you know, I'm on YouTube and I've got this, SundayGardener.com lives on in, you know, in eternity, that's always going to be the sort of hub of everything that I do. And you need your own hub as well. So if it's your name, even if it's your name, that could be the hub of everything that you do. Sunday Gardener is the hub. We've got Online Travel Boss School. We have Online Travel Boss Magazine, TV, all of that. But the hub of everything is sundaygardener.com. Does that make sense? That is the asset and really sort of the, the center of the wheel of all of the products that we create. You want to be in control of that. When you give that to, when you're using your host agencies, a uh, collateral asset, right? You switch host agencies, that asset is no longer yours, as is the name associated with it is no longer yours. They decommission it. You sever the relationship, that that subdomain, you know, your name dot host agency dot com uh, dot com ceases to exist. So being in control of your own marketing assets is really important. Now that's on the website side. You know, another tool, like I mentioned, is your CRM tool. For example, I was with outside agents for years. Um, that's how I in got introduced to Tess. Um, and going from an, uh, a host agency that had nothing going to Tess was like, oh my God, I was, I was in love. I was like, Tess is everything. Like, um, and, and frankly, I, I really enjoyed Tess's, uh, user portal still to this day say out of all the portals that I've seen on the user side, I want to say that Yuli is probably the best comparable example of a user portal. So this is the client facing side of the portal. Um, Tess's was really sexy. Yuli's is also equally as sexy. Um, I really like their um, interface that they've built for uh, the client. Um, and and at the end of the day, that's what we want. I want to be able to create an experience for my clients so when they interact with my business, they have an amazing experience after I've delivered the service, right? So same thing with you. So when it comes to the CRM tool, right, using your host agency's tool, it may be pretty attractive to do that, right? Particularly if you're coming into it and you're brand new and you have no idea what to do. The problem is, is that the host agency doesn't tell you how to use the tool. They give you access to user guides, just like, you know, out of the box, Travel Joy gives you access to functionality usage, but they don't tell you the business process for which you use it. So let's go through the same scenario. Let's say you're with host agency A. You've built out all of this collateral. You built out email templates. You built out forms and tests. You built out the way that you do your business. And then you decide to go independent. Now what? Because if you leave the host agency, all of that stuff that you've built out in your CRM system goes away. You 99% of the time don't get to take the account with you switch it over to your own individual account. Now, there may be some scenarios that you can, but oftentimes what happens is that you have to 
export your data out and re-import them and then rebuild your workflow inside of your own version of the tool. Why not do that now? <laughs> Why not do it now? It's your business. This is not something that you're doing for leisure. This is the business of your business. Build out your business processes, your workflow in your own asset that you control. You get access to 100% of the features because what I will tell you just in the example of working with outside agents, when I evaluated tests as an independent person, there were features turned off in tests because the host agency didn't want their sub agents to have access to those features. I don't know why that is, but there were certain features that were turned off. So that's actually number two reason to have your own CRM tool and your own tool is control of the features. When you work with a vendor that offers software, you're going to get 100% of the features unless of course they've got some sort of levels and they only give you whatever but I would I would I would I would I would caution you to do that you want to make sure that you are you have full access to all the features that are available particularly when it comes to a travel CRM system you want to be able to maneuver your business the way that you want to operate the business now my goal is to give you best practices to help you define a workflow that makes sense for your business. But literally, you are the one who's in charge to make the decisions on which workflow makes the best sense for you and what you want to do. So that's number two is features that your host agency will turn off features because again, they're trying to satisfy a larger community of people, the scenarios that they may or may not want you to do as a sub agent, you may want to be able to do as your own agency and as your own business. So feature set is one number one, um, number two, number one was control, you want to be able to control the experience, make sure that the way that your clients interact with your business through email, through forms, look and feel that you are, you can control that as much as possible. And then you also want to control your assets. So when I say assets, I'm, I'm really talking marketing assets. I'm talking software assets. You want to be the one in control. So the only reason why the asset goes away is because you decided to switch, for example, not because you decided to switch partners. Okay. The number three reason why you want to get your own tools is I've already alluded to this is continuity, business continuity. What that means is, is that, um, you know, I don't ever want to downplay the value of the host agency. The host agency, um, host agencies are extremely valuable to new travel agents and even people who've been in the business for years, right? They are the olive branch to suppliers to help you get connected to suppliers. Um, the relationship is an important relationship to your business. However, it is and can be interchangeable, meaning you can go from one host agency to another based on how you grow, right? You may start with, uh, you know, one host agency, maybe you were recruited and maybe that host agency no longer serves the needs that you want. And so you switch out. You want your business not to be disrupted by partnership switch outs, right? If I decide to use Vacation Express one day and then I use Vax another, you're not normally impacted by that, right? Because you can log into their system, you can do your business and you're good. But when you're using a core system like your CRM system and it's your core operating system, right? If you switch host agencies, You've got to start over. You've got to get your data. You hope you can get your data, export it. It exports. And then if you go from host agency A to B and you change systems, that's a major migration. And that can be a very scary thing. So what I would say is pick the system now, beginning of the year, make that your goal. Pick the system, implement the system and start standing up your business of your business, right? Just like, I want to just impress upon you that. So those are the three reasons. But what I added also in my notes are like, I get the reasons why there's fear. The first reason why, and I want to talk about is, is setup, setup and cost. Um, when I, when I, before, like I, I've always had a background in software, 
but I was, I was always very scared when I started owning my own business of the investment in software, because, you know, 20 years ago, I don't know that it was 20 years ago, but 10, 10, 10, it was definitely 15 years ago when I opened our first brick and mortar business. And, um, I, I remember I wanted, I wanted to build my own website, <laughs> you know, back then I was crazy. I used to try and do everything. So I invested in the software, um, and it's called front page. And it doesn't even exist now. There's so many, um, uh, drag and drop editors like Wix and all that now. And that didn't exist back in, uh, 20 in 2009 or six when we first started. So I invested in software and it was an expensive investment for me. It was like thirty four hundred dollars to buy the software at the time. And, and then I had to learn it. And then I like spent hours. I had to, you know, buy a template. It's crazy. And so the setup was like monumental. Like it was like I spent, I'll never forget. I spent like like weeks learning the software, staying up night. You know, I worked a full time job. We had the barbershop and, and, you know, and I'm staying up till two o'clock in the morning trying to learn how to implement, uh, you know, learn a website. And it was it, it, it was tiresome. Like it was a lot. And I and I know that you guys may feel that as well. Maybe you've already invested in Travel Joy and you're like, I cannot piece together A to Z. I don't know what a direct invoice is. I don't know what a supplier invoice and they and I keep screwing it up. And, and it can be overwhelming the setup of a software. But the reality is when it comes to your CRM system, even if you're using your host agency's CRM system, you still have to learn the software, right? You can't avoid the learning of the thing. You still have to learn it. The, the thing that makes learning the software problematic is you don't have a business process to implement the software. So you just sort of dive in trying to piece things together. And that's the reason why it's disconnected. So I get why it's scary not to want to, you know, do the setup and the costs. You may be thinking, Oh my God, it's so expensive. But really the, the CRM systems, the, the three that are players in the space, they're pretty economical. I think Travel Joy is $30 a month. You know, if you use the link that I've got, you get 50% off for the first three months. So it's only $15 for the first three um, months. Then it's $30. That's relatively cheap compared to 10 years ago when I was doing software, you know, purchasing software. Um, you know, in the salon industry, like it was, it was crazy the amount of costs that you had to, they didn't have a lot of web software. So you don't really have that. I think Tess is comparable and maybe 25 or 30, you know, there's, there's a lot of very affordable software, uh, products out there for the travel advisor. So cost is not the thing. Setup is really the thing that I think is the biggest hurdle for travel advisors is like, which features should I use? How do I do this? How do I quickly get set up so that I can do that? So that's the reason why we've created the training. So if you haven't uh, seen it, we've got Travel Joy um, Accelerator, which has got Travel Joy Basics. It's got the booking pages. It also has automation and explains to you the whole automation. That is really designed to help you make sense out of the setup. So regardless of what you decide, you can't avoid setup. So if you're going to have to go through the pain of setup, you might as well go through the pain, do it one time in your business, and that's it until you decide to switch softwares. It's not a pain that you'll have to go through if you decide to switch host agencies. So that's number two, number one, number two thing um, that I find that people are scared about when it comes to having their own t tools is they don't really know how to build a brand, right? So when it comes to like, I, like I was in, there's a travel joy group and I was in the group and one of the, there was somebody who posted and one of the hot topics was just like the banner that you put on the back of your page um, when you are taking requests or you're building forms, right? What, is, what should that look like? Right? So people, they, they use Canva and they're like, I don't even know what to put on the page. I don't even know what to put on the graphic. Um, 
And so branding your business can be sort of a scary endeavor. And, you know, I know that there are branding companies that will charge you thousands of dollars to do a brand. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know that I want to do that yet. I'm not ready to do that. And so at minimum, what I would recommend that you do is at least get a logo, get a professional logo. Um, and if you get a logo company, when you get a logo company, they should give you a logo kit and inside of that kit will include the logo, the colors used to create the logo so that you have your hex codes or your color, your RGB codes so that you understand which colors you should be using. Um, you know, if you can expend the dollars to have a brand uh, conversation with a, a brand strategist, that's always good too. So like, who is your client? Who do you want to work with? Because if I work with corporate clients, the kind of logo I'm going to get is going to be a lot different. If I'm working with, let's say, moms of, uh, you know, young children that want to take family vacations and I'm doing Disney, right? That's going to be a different branding that I'm going to do if I'm working with corporate clients, right? So the branding conversation, I get why people don't want to do websites right away. It's not the number one thing that I say that you need when you come out the gate, when you start your travel business. A website is important, but it's not the first thing that you need. There's certainly other things that you can um, expend your time and effort on when you are, I would say, six months to the first year into your business. I would rather you expend your effort building out your workflow, getting your CRM system down, really um, getting your messaging, your client avatar, who you want to work with to find. Those would be the things that I would say will be more important to you right now than, you know, spending a lot of money on getting a website built. But certainly making sure that you understand who your client is and the logo, um, I would think would be a really good investment. Number three thing is, is that you want to make sure that whatever tools that you do, that when you're using those tools, it's um, as disruptive to your business if you decide to switch host agencies, switch or go independent. Because listen, you, you, it's a partnership and it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a forever partnership. I know people who've been with their host agency for years. I know people who've been with a host agency for 12 months, 18 months, two years, and they're like, okay, I'm ready to go out on my own. I, you know, I, I've, I've done what I need to do. And I'm ready to um, go out on my own. So when it comes to the tools that you pick, you want to make sure that there's a minimal disruption to your business. You don't want that to be a monumental effort on your, like you've got to switch out all of your social media pages. You've got, because you've got the link to your, you know, host agency's website. You want that to be minimally disruptive. Your clients shouldn't know that there's a, a switch. Like that's how non-disruptive a host agency transition period should be to your business. So that being said, so here are some of the things I want to lay out in terms of costs that you should think about when it comes to picking tools and some tools that like when I think about tools for your travel business and what I think are like critical, you need to have your own domain URL. So that is, you know, your .com. So you know, I know people that get .net, dot, you know, whatever, .com. Like, don't get any other domain, get .com. Now, if you want to get vanity domains like .travel and .all that, that's great. But you need a .com domain. You need to own your own domain. You need to have it in your business name. You also, if you are um, smart, you'd also get it in your own name. So have all of your own assets in your control. So your domain name, your business name, your name, um, and any, if you're doing like signature, uh, let's say you're doing signature trips that you know, and you've got a really great name for them, get that also, get that URL and get that domain um, name as well. So website domain is really important. Do you need to be hosted? No, I don't think you need to be hosted right away. You don't need to start to host a website. The actual cost of a domain, you can get them as low as I've seen $8 to $12 to $20 a year. That's it. Like, so you get the domain, you can purchase it for multiple years. If you want to just get it the first year and renew um, annually, you can do that. 
I do recommend that you get the privacy policy associated with um, a domain when you buy it. And that just protects spammers from you. So I always do privacy protection. So that just keeps who owns the domain private so that you don't get spammed. So the cost for that is, like I said, you know, as low as $8. I've seen some domains, usually if it's like free, you're also doing hosting. And unless you're going to build a website, you don't need hosting. You just need the URL. So that is what I would do for that website. I'm going to talk a little bit about email because I get a lot of y'all's email with the name of your business at gmail.com with the name of your business at yahoo.com or the name of your business at somebody else.com, right? At, at the at symbol and some other thing other than your business. Now, if you want to be branded, you need to invest in an email with the name of your business. It looks professional, looks like you've invested in your business. It looks like something, it, it makes you look like something. When it comes to marketing your business, it also helps with deliverability. So I can always tell those people who are really serious about their business. And it could be, you know, I'm not going to say that you just because you don't know how to do it and you haven't does it doesn't mean that you're not serious about your business. But if you are using at Gmail to run your travel business, I want you to think about that. Like, what, what message does that send to your prospective client that you're sending them a Gmail? You're sending them, you know, travelrs at gmail.com. What it says is that you're not really serious about the business. That's the message that it sends. You want to be a luxury brand. A lot of people tell me that they want to sell luxury uh, travel. They want high-end customers. But you've not even invested in your business to show people that you're serious about your business. Your email matters. Um, so if you have at Gmail and you're running your business at Gmail, don't come in my inbox saying, I run a very successful profitable business with at Gmail. I'm just saying, get, get a domain, like get, get an email domain as well. So when you're getting your website domain, get an email that is as little as $4 a month, $4.95. I think GoDaddy charges for basic email. You don't need you know, the highest tier email, you just need something very, um, very small uh, just to be able to do your email. So get professional email um, as that. So that's a tool. Do not get your your host agency if they offer an email account. Get your own email account so you can control it. Google, you know, I do everything through Gmail. Um, so I have my own email account through Gmail. Um multiple business accounts through Gmail, unfortunately. So I've got to consolidate everything, but everything is run through Gmail. Um, it's called Google Workspace is how you get your, you can get your domain through them. We actually use GoDaddy. We do uh, GoDaddy for GoDaddy or domain.com for URL. And then we also have our email hosted um, through them as well. So email, big thing, not very expensive. There is a little bit of tech, but if whoever you purchase it with, they will help you. Usually the support for getting your email is really like GoDaddy is really good. Domain.com has been really great. Um, so email. So you definitely need your own business email account. Invest in doing that in 2023. You need your own CRM system. That is the heartbeat of your travel business. That is how you manage the relationship, how you manage communication. That's how you manage bookings. That's how you manage your workflow, your task list, your terms and conditions. Like you name it, that is your technology stack. Literally, when I do training now, I'm trying to minimize the amount of technology that I recommend clients to get. So it's a CRM system and it's an email marketing tool. Um, right now, the three players do not have email, an email marketing tool built in. They have email functionality built in, but they don't have an email marketing. So really right now, I recommend two tools. I recommend your CRM system and an email marketing tool. And that's pretty much the two tools that you need in your business. And then, um, and that's it. Like, so it's four things, a website, a email, a legitimate email, not an at, an at somebody else's dot com. You want your own business name, business email account. You want your business domain. 
and a domain is just a URL. So let's say your name is, you know, Trip and Travels, right? You want tripandtravels.com and then you want your name at tripandtravels.com or info at tripandtravels.com. That's what you want. And then you want your own CRM system. We're training to, for this quarter, we're training to Travel Joy. We will be um, adding training for tests in the future. Um, and we will also be doing training for Vacation CRM in the future as well. But right now, we offer training for Travel Joy, the entire suite of Travel Joy. So to implement your entire workflow, CRM system, the three big players in the space right now are Travel Joy, Travify, Vacation CRM, and Tess. We Travel is in the space too, but I don't necessarily uh, recommend them because there's some major functionality that's missing that we need as travel agents, one of them being terms and conditions, management, signatures, being able to house that. So when it comes to recommendations, I really want to have tools that are allowing us to protect ourselves, being able to, you know, get an e-signature on our terms, house that so that we can use that um, in the event that there's any sort of, you know, chargeback or anything like that. So um, I do have some uh, software CRMs that I am evaluating. And so once I get finished evaluating those, um, and if they pass the evaluation, I'll invite them to come and speak into our group so that you can also have those as options. All right. So that is it for tonight. CRM, like that's my mantra this month because I really want you guys to understand you are as good as, as you run your business. So if you want to have a successful, profitable business in 2023 and you don't have good internal processes, it's not likely that your clients are going to, and, and it takes you a lot of effort to execute your processes. It's going to impact your ability to grow. End of story. I don't care what it is. I don't care. Like you could tell me I make six figures. You can't grow to seven figures if your processes are inefficient, right? If you get an influx of new business, it's going to be problematic. It's probably the user experience that your client goes to. You are probably literally staying up all night trying to remember, did you send this email? Did you, did you collect this piece of information? all of that because you don't have good processes. So I'm going to tell you the software is only can only be as good as the process that you've defined on using the software. Software is not magic. <laughs> you know, we buy and we get software and we think it's going to be a magic pill and it's not magic. Um, automation is not magic. You only automate something that you've defined a process for. <laughs> Actually, I was listening to someone the other night and and that's the, the, the thing is when I, when I talk to you guys out there on the internet streets, you guys, and I ask you like, what do you want to do? And everybody's telling me I want to automate. And then the very next question, I'm like, well, what kind of process do you have? Oh, well, I haven't really worked on that. I don't have a process. You never start with automation. You always start with the process. You figure out what you want to do. You do it. And then you automate to make it more efficient. So that's what we want to do in 2023. I want to see you guys madly profitable this year. I want you guys hitting all of your financial goals. I want you guys, you know, looking at the end on the, the end of the year, chapter 12 saying, by golly, I did it and I hit it out the park, right? And so let's start internally. Let's not look at, you know, I could jump for jump to let's get more clients, right? But if the inside of your house is not good, you getting more clients is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> it's actually what's going to happen. You're going to get more clients and you're going to either piss them off or you're going to piss yourself off because you don't have your stuff together. So let's get the inside of your house straight before you start to scale up and get more clients. Let's get all of the housekeeping stuff done, starting with your CRM system. So if you're using your host agency CRM system, no problem. You can continue to use that. Oftentimes they require you to do that so that like I know for outside agents, they require you to use their CRM system so you can get paid, but it doesn't have to necessarily manage your business. You can put in the minimal information that you need so that you can get your commission check, but then you're running your business outside of, of your host agency's system and you're running your business the way that you want to run your business.